All right, let's talk about Pirates. Don't Stop is an AT's digital single produced by the Universe platform on January 31st, 2022. A music video was dropped on February 5th, 2022, and that's what we'll be covering. In terms of album timeline, the song came a few months after Zero Fever Epilogue, which was the conclusion of the Fever series as a whole. In terms of story timeline, that's fully up to interpretation. Personally, I don't think Don't Stop is part of the storyline, but that doesn't mean people can't theorize a place for it in the lore. Hong Jung stated in ATEEZ's reaction to the music video, quote, A lot of the fans were guessing how the storyline connects to ATEEZ, but more than that, you know our variety show universe? I think you should see how it connects to that. I think that could be easier to understand. Son agreed, saying that it would be more fun for ATEEZ to connect to Don't Stop back to the unique space pirate storyline they've constructed through their universe content. In summary, most of their universe variety shows have to do with ATEEZ's relationship with an organization called the Earth Secret Center United Universe, or the ESC for short. In their April 2022 show, The Vikings, we see ATEEZ applying for a pirate competition in order to acquire their own ship, but wind up framed for a jewelry theft they didn't actually commit. This is a prequel to the April 2021 show, The Five Clues, where they're on probation because of this mistake and have to run an interplanetary guesthouse. Look, no one said it was a particularly gritty storyline, which is why it's fun to connect the darker, noir tone of Don't Stop back to such a lighthearted universe. Our main sources of information for this story are the making film and the AT's reaction video. In both, we get a concise explanation of the concept. A group of pirates, led by Hong Jung, lose everything they have in an instant and must start their journey again from nothing. That's the entire story we see, condensed down to a sentence and resolved entirely within the four-minute runtime of the music video. I love a self-contained storyline. I really, really do. So, let's break it down. ATEEZ is split up. Hong Jung and Mingyi are working alone. San and Ouyang are working together. And Zheng Ho, Yun Ho, Yeosong, and Song Hwa are operating as a group. What's absolutely delightful about their separation is, ironically, we can better see them working seamlessly as one unit, complete with heist rolls. We'll start with the biggest group of four, who are breaking into the central pawn shop. It's the middle of the night and there are grates over the window, so obviously it's after hours of operation, but that's no issue for Zhang Ho, who pops the doors open with a crowbar. They're wearing these sick black and white skeleton masks, and then take them off once they're inside. So, either someone in ATEEZ has already taken down the interior security cameras, or Sunny has some serious insurance coverage. They look around at the items, Yun Ho taking an interest in a short silver cutlass, which is THE quintessential pirate sword, but Song Hwa and Yosong move quickly to the back. This isn't an impulse robbery, they're here for something specific. Some of the signs in this pawn shop look like they could be story relevant, but most are hard to see in the video. There may be benefits to scrubbing the making film to see what they all say, but time is money and I'm broke. Hilariously, there's a Burbank Police Department sign visible while Sung Hwa and Yo Sung are doing blatantly criminal things. There's a sign near the desk that says Wanted, Ship or Anchor, which keeps with the pirate theme. Also, there are two Wanted posters of other varieties, one outside that looks intentionally blurred so we can't see who's on it, and one inside expressing Sunny's desire for more gold jewelry. Two signs that have nothing to do with lore but make me incredibly happy are In God We Trust, All Others Must Pay Cash, and Please Unload Gun and Remove Ski Mask Before Entering. Fantastic. <laughs> God, I love Don't Stop. The pawn shop counter has some additional trinkets, like a golden skull next to some old-fashioned amber glass bottles and a small hourglass. Yosung and Sung Hwa pass these all by to focus on the bookshelf spanning the back wall. A little out of place for a pawn shop like this. Well, after tugging a few books and checking for unusual drafts, Yosong bodies one of the shelves aside to reveal a hidden vault. It's something straight out of Ocean's Eleven, which makes sense considering Don't Stop is literally a heist. We'll talk about all the members' specific roles later on because they all definitely have them and I really want to talk about it. The vault is big, industrial grade, in its own little secret chrome room. Now I bet Sonny's really wishing he had some security cameras. Listen, I'm all for a good secret room, but there are no traps or cameras or any indication that this vault is protected in any capacity beyond the door, which takes Yosong maybe 45 seconds to drill through. This could be chalked up to negligence or music video logic, but considering the ties to their variety shows on Universe, this is likely a test. A game. The hard part isn't breaking in, it's finding the clues and opening the treasure chest and getting a piece of a larger puzzle. This particular piece turns out to be a certificate of registry for something called the Destiny Ship. Essentially, the title to a ship. Surveyed in Seoul, Korea, located in Shipyard AB. I did a check to see if this was a member's blood type, and none of them are type AB, which is funny. The owner of the Destiny ship is named by two initials, H, J. Now, we only have two people in the lore with those initials, and while my friend and lore collaborator Cece would love this to be Mr. Henry Jo from Universe A, I think this is Hong Joong. For the members to have lost everything, that means they needed to have it in the first place. They're not just stealing a ship, they're getting their ship back. I'll be honest, I'm 24 years old and I wear bifocals, and even with my head tilted all the way back, I couldn't read all of the small text, so I may have missed an easter egg or two, but there are two legible names near the top. 
Charles W. Morgan of New Bedford, Massachusetts, isn't referencing a person, but a ship. The last surviving American whaling ship. Whaling used to be a multi-million dollar industry back in the late 19th century, but it obviously sucks and it's good that it's gone. Despite the ship's harmful purpose, the Charles W. Morgan it was named after was apparently a fierce abolitionist, which is cool. Back in 2014, the boat version of Charles W. Morgan underwent five years of restoration to take its 38th voyage sailing up and down the East Coast, visiting cities, several of them huge former whaling towns, and educating people on whales and their preservation. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has a whole article on it. It's really cool. Sorry that this turned into a ship lesson, but I'm not sorry at all. I'm not sure why Universe picked a whaling ship for this Easter egg, and I'm also not sure why they picked the other name, William H. Tripp because he was apparently the curator of the Bourne Whaling Museum in New Bedford, Massachusetts. I don't know who on the Universe staff has a special interest in whaling, and specifically whaling in New Bedford, Massachusetts, but that's what's on the registry. Maybe they meant William H. Tripp Jr., who was a prolific American naval architect throughout the entire 20th century. He was the pioneer of using fiberglass in sailboat designs later in his life, but he also designed dozens of wooden ships as well. Anyway, Yunho looks back at Songhua as if to check if this is the document they came for. A single motion that instantly establishes their chain of command. At least how it stands between the four of them. That wraps up the pawn shop burglary, and we'll jump to our next pair of criminals, Uyong and San. Every good heist movie needs a casino, and Don't Stop is no exception. Well, it's more a dingy back room of some decrepit building, but the casino vibes are there. Single table, a crystal chandelier, bottles of alcohol behind them, a large man in wraparound sunglasses, they've got it all. The scene intros with a fancy card shuffle, and based on the jewelry and sleeve cuffs, this is Uyong. However, in the reaction video, Uyang makes it very clear that someone else is in the costume and doing the move, and 18 e should not ask him to show them the move at fan signs because he will not be able to do it. The duo are winning, by quite a bit, because their third player has run out of chips and instead bets a valuable item, which is a common theme in heist movies. If a crew wants to swindle a target in a heist movie, they play poker or another betting game, back the target into a corner they can't get out of without risking their pride or reputation, which basically forces them to bet the item that the crew was after in the first place. Here, Uyung and San were after the man's spyglass the whole time. Everything's going their way, and San goes all in. Now, it's important to point out that San and Uyung are cheating. Of course they are, they're pirates. But I think it's important to point out that the universe variety shows aren't afraid to let 80s be a little nasty, and the Don't Stop music video has that too. In the final round of the game, San has the beginning of a perfect hand, and goes all in. He only needs one last card to sweep the game, which Uyung so graciously passes him. The two win easily, but when they go to collect their winnings, their friend isn't so willing to give the spyglass up. Whether he knew the duo were cheating or never had any intention of letting them walk out in the first place, a henchman appears just as large as the first guy, and things aren't looking so good, until a black van crashes through the wall and the rubble happens to only fall on Thing 1 and Thing 2, and the pawn shop group has arrived in the nick of time. A car smashing through a concrete wall as a deus ex machina is really funny on its own, but I think what's funnier about Don't Stop specifically is that they all get out of the van. That isn't a complaint, I don't have any complaints about this video, except maybe this specific shot of San getting used twice. It's just that the concept of everyone trying to exit the vehicle that's currently halfway through a destroyed concrete wall, including the driver, you know, is really extra of them. <laughs> what are they looking for? Why do all of them need to get out? If this is a rescue mission, why don't San and Uyang grab the spyglass and jump in the van to escape this place as fast as possible? The answer is because it's a music video and a cool shot, but it makes me smile to point out. Now they've acquired two pieces of the puzzle, the Destiny ship's deed and the spyglass. Only two more items to go. Let's talk about Mingi. Mingi scenes are fairly compact, but they're visually and narratively really interesting. Wearing the evil cousin of his illusion pants, he's dumped on the side of a deserted road by at least two men in a sleek black car. His hands are tied, and he's pretty beaten up, but he's also fairly unbothered, even turning his back to the vehicle as it drives away, and almost immediately explodes in an incredibly iconic scene. In the reaction video, Mingi says how excited he is to be in the thumbnail for a music video, and it's important to point that out so we can all be excited with him. It's well deserved, the shot is fantastic, and Mingi looks so, so fine. Clearly, the car exploding is Mingi's doing. Whether he planted the bomb before he was restrained or managed to get it in place while his hands were tied, both are impressive. But while the car smolders, Mingi enters the wreckage and locates a small wooden box with an anchor on the lid and a high-tech sundial inside. Now, I actually assumed it was a compass. It wasn't until someone mentioned this scene in the Loratini Discord server that I learned it was a sundial. Speaking of which, small plug, if you're not aware, I co-wrote an AT's lore master doc with two other incredible people. It's over 135 pages and compiles canon material, research links, and our strongest theories in one place. Go follow Hololortini on Twitter and hop into our Discord, which is really active and the ideal place to trade info and theories with other Lortini. Now, the sundial might feel like an odd choice considering the frequency with which the compass has appeared from the very start of the treasure series, but the sun is becoming a major player in the lore. There's reference to it in the lyrics of Hala Hala, there's imagery of it in Gorilla's set, and it's involved in nearly every theory concerning Halazia. This isn't a random decision, and it's something that likely holds weight in the storyline. It's long been theorized that there's an item that interlocks to the sun, like the Cromer interlocks to the moon, and a sundial makes as much sense as any other relic to fit that position. 
but that's for the future. Let's get back to Don't Stop. That's three of the four items recovered, and now we head over to the last member of the heist crew, Hong Jung. Hong Jung is alone and enraged in a large, seemingly empty mansion. Sitting nearby is an elegant cane, very similar to the one he'll use in Gorilla six months after the release of Don't Stop. This is one of my favorite set pieces in an AT's music video, which is really saying something. The pale room, the giant white piano, the black miniature pirate ship, the open windows facing a night sky, it's just gorgeous. And that's not to mention Hong Jung's exquisitely textured coat, the harsh black of his captain's band, the maturity of his dark short hair, and the excellent makeup work on the black eye. God, I love Don't Stop. Hong Jung is, of course, the mastermind of our heist crew, and now we can talk about heist rules. Jong Ho is the muscle. Straightforward, unsurprising, well displayed in the music video with how he crowbars a locked door open. Even his clothes are dark, like a bouncer or a security guard, which fits the stoic strongman type perfectly. Yoon Ho is the driver. An essential heist role and fun because we know that Yoon Ho likes driving in music videos like he did in Fireworks. Since 80s don't have their ship anymore, mobility comes down to the van, which Yoon Ho is in charge of, and handles well enough to drive directly through a concrete wall without killing two of his teammates. Uyung and San can fit two classic heist roles, the grifter and the conman. They might be one each, they might both be both, but they're definitely filling these roles. The grifter is someone charming, able to get into places most strangers aren't allowed in. The fact that they're in a private poker game with an assumedly fairly wealthy criminal is a distinct sign that they've somehow earned his trust. He likely doesn't know who they really are, but he likes them well enough to bet a precious spyglass into a game with them. The con man is someone skilled in luck-based games, and even more skilled at cheating in luck-based games. They've got quick reflexes, a silver tongue, and plenty of literal and figurative cards up their sleeves. The grifter gets them into the game, the con man makes sure they win. Based on clothing, I would have had Uyung as the grifter and San as the con man, which also fits their IRL personalities a bit better, but the shuffling of cards and the passing of the ace shows that Uyung is extremely familiar with the deck of cards, which is far more fitting for the con man, and San is wearing sunglasses on the back of his head, so clearly he's committed to whatever role he's playing as the grifter. Yosong is the thief. He's focused as they look around, and he's the first one to the bookcases to search for the hidden vault. By the way he's pulling at certain books and looking at the underside of shelves for hidden buttons, this isn't his first rodeo. Not only is he the one to find the lever to get them in, he's also the one who has the tools and the skills to get the vault open. His small stature is ideal for any thief, and similar to Zhang Ho, the full black getup looks so good on him. I mean, looks so good for the thief role. Sung Hua is the right hand. In the larger pawn shop group, he's not the first one in the door. He moves almost casually, even when helping Yeo Song search the bookcases. Yoon Ho checks in with him about the document, even when this is so clearly what they've come here for. They defer to him. He's second only to Hong Ju. Mingi is a curious case. Demolition expert matches the bomb, and lone wolf matches the isolated nature of this particular task, but I think the role that encompasses all of the unique vibes of Mingi's scene is the wild card. It matches Mingi's versatile personality well, and covers how beat up he is. He was in a place of danger and came out of it alive, but not unscathed. Using bombs is often a risk in heists, given how fickle they are and how much attention they draw, and Mingi is uncaring of both. There's also the fact that he, uh, killed people. Yeah, those men did not survive that explosion. Not only is this the only violence we witness ourselves, but it's fairly extreme, which means Mingi has a mindset of, by any means necessary. Wild card fits perfectly. Finally, our mastermind. Hong Jung is alone in a place of safety while his crew execute the retrieval of the puzzle pieces. Though Ates mentions in the making film and the reaction that all of the members are angry, they've all lost the ship, and their future as a pirate crew is in jeopardy. If they don't find the items, they don't solve the puzzle, they don't clear their name, and they don't get to sail again. Hong Jung is feeling this loss perhaps harder than anyone else. The captain goes down with their ship, and if the black eye is any indication, he at least didn't go down without a fight. There's a high chance he blames himself for their situation, and that rage is burning hot. Although he glares at the model pirate ship, he hits the piano first, unwilling to take his anger out on the symbol of his life's purpose. In the main AT storyline, all the pirate ships we see have AT's flags for sales. While the pirate references they make in music videos are classic for the most part, hoisting their own group flags is a huge symbol of their unique status in the world, and as pirates themselves. It's, I feel, maybe the largest indication of our distance from the main storyline that the model ship is flying the standard black and white skull and crossbones. It simplifies the story for me, and builds upon the idea that Don't Stop is a genuine homage to piracy as a whole, and not the unique type of piracy that ATs is known to practice. It's only after Hong Jung smashes the lid of the piano shut and lights the room a flame that he grabs the chip. He slams it down onto the piano where it shatters into pieces. It might be emotionally fulfilling for him to destroy it, but some of the debris sends sparks shooting upwards, one of which injures his right eye. We get this incredible shot of him staring through the flames, where he spots a large brass key in the wreckage of the model ship. The final puzzle piece. It was under his nose the whole time. Hong Jung says in the making film that he lost his eye because he couldn't control his rage. 
In the main AT storyline, eyes have great importance. Covering one eye is very common and has several meanings depending on which theories you subscribe to. Here, in this universe-based universe, losing an eye is likely symbolic of paying a price for losing a game. There are victories, and there are penalties. As if losing everything he's built up wasn't enough, Hong Joon needs a physical reminder of what happens when he's not the winner. In the shadowy parallel to one of the iconic scenes from Wave, a now eye-patched Hong Joon staggers down a long road, uncaring of the mansion burning behind him, and makes his way into the desert where he's reunited with his members, although there's a distance between him and them. Treasure and Pirate King established deserts as AT's starting ground, so the visualization of them returning to their origins fits perfectly with the idea that they have to start their journey again from nothing. This was such a smart creative decision that instantly sparks a sense of deja vu for any audience member who made that connection, even subconsciously. The music cuts out, leaving only the rumble of the van's engine and Sung Hwa's footsteps in the dirt. Hong Joon's partner in crime is the only one to approach him. There's a really powerful emotion in this scene. The relaxed way the members are sitting doesn't match their expressions. Losing their ship definitely was a blow to the group as a whole, and it feels like it had an impact internally as well. At this moment, things are tense, which is only added to by the silence. There's an air of uncertainty. Every member has a different look in his eyes, and a different expectation of how the next few seconds are going to go. Hong Joong stops a dozen feet away and comes no closer. This could be a sign that he's reluctant to assume they've forgiven him for the loss of the ship if he really does blame himself, or it could be that he doesn't think they've succeeded. Making them shout their failure across a desert is a power play intended to humiliate, but so is tossing their unquestionable success down at Hong Joong's boots, which is what Song Hwa does. They found what they'd lost without Hong Joong's help. For the crew to become unified, Hong Joong needs to bend down and pick up all the things they've retrieved, and that means bowing to his members. Tyrant as he is, we know he's not going to let his pride get in the way of their futures, and he picks up the bag. We're in the next shot, where presumably enough time has passed for them to use that vault money on some new clothes and a spiffy leather eye patch for their captain. Trying to show the passage of time by jumping from a nighttime scene to a nighttime scene is really jarring, and likely wasn't a design decision, but the side effect of needing to shoot both scenes in the same night. In that case, there was the need for a costume change? We could have just as easily assumed they were working as quickly as possible, but these outfits are insane enough for me to forgive the awkward transition. The Destiny ship is beached in a sand dune, dark and regal despite the lack of sails in her awkward position. We don't really know who last had the Destiny ship, so it's impossible to determine if the ship was purposefully crashed here or simply beached far enough in the desert to make it harder for ATs to find. Doesn't matter, they found it anyway. Each member gets their moment in the frame as they pass by the camera to start their journey again and a sleek chrome title screen ends the video. Don't Stop is a masterclass in aesthetic storytelling. It's clear, it's well-paced, it's some of the best acting we've ever seen from ATs in a music video, and it's absolutely delightful. The song itself is really good, with a powerful drop complemented by the two scenes with aggressive flames. Typically, ATs don't get to explore lyrics this blatantly sexy, and the line distribution isn't abysmal compared to other KQ-produced songs. It's fun to see the members get to explore a concept this dark, and they clearly had fun making it. Universe has a history of producing title track worthy singles with nods to a group's main lore, and Don't Stop is a fantastic addition to that list. Shout out to Kiss or Death, the single they produced for Monsta X that also happens to be one of the greatest K-pop songs ever made. They reference Monsta X's lore in their music video in really cool ways, and do ATs just as much justice in Don't Stop. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown. If you're already subscribed, you're bonkers, and I appreciate you. If you're not, consider it. There will be more AT story videos in the future, and I'll always take input on any music videos or concepts that you'd like to see covered in more detail. I'm on TikTok at, oh, my link, it, I'll put my, my TikTok is linked to my channel, and I highly recommend following Hala Lortini on Twitter and taking a look at the AT's lore master doc. And if you've got thoughts on it, you can tweet at us or hop into the Discord to discuss freely. I'm going to continue to squeeze Halazia until it makes sense. Anyway, smash that like button.